everyone welcome back to ti vlog series it's me ada your host it's always a pleasure to meet with you and have our weekly chats today i'm going to just go into what i want to talk about and it's about a little a story about a little girl that's gone viral on the internet social media everywhere if you're not a nigerian you may not have come across this story but if you are a nigerian or an african you may certainly have come across this story it's about a little girl called Ochanya. Um, I'm going to play you a short clip so you can have a little bit of an idea of what this story is about before I go into my full message. Stay tuned. Here is Ochanya's auntie and uncle. That's her auntie, the woman who neglected her care and um, this is the husband the man the perpetrator who abused Ochanya sexually for four years and this is his son who also abused and molested Ochanya for four years hi there welcome back to the part two or the continuation of that video um, as I did say I wanted you guys to watch the clips first before I go into my message um, wives women Marriage is a beautiful thing. I absolutely, you know, adore the idea of marriage, getting married, raising a family, having children and all the package of being in a marriage. It's an amazing concept. I have no um, disregard or disrespect for married couples. I just want to make that clear before I delve into my message. However, I need to pick on this occasion and basically evaluate the roles that wives play in marriages some wives, not everyone, not all the wives, some. If you're married to a person or man and you have a child living with you, uh, a domestic care or a maid or a relative's child whom you are guardian to, the onus is on you, the woman of the house, um, to actually keep an eye on this girl, to take care of this girl. In this story, for instance, Ochanya was sent to live with her aunt due to some reasons about her education, her mom, whatever the reasons were, is, is, is not relevant at the moment. The fact of the matter is her mother, her family, sent her off to live with her aunt um, under the belief that this is our family, our extended family, and they believed that their child's safety would be paramount as well. You know, it's not an uncommon practice. If you are from Nigeria, you would understand that families back home would usually send out one of their children or child to live with a distant relative. Um, I went through that path in my life. I had relatives or cousins, distant cousins, live in my house as a child. They grew up with us. My mother raised them, my father raised them, and they raised them alongside ourselves, you know, and there was no difference. We were, there was no issue of discrimination, or you're not the birth child, or you're, you're a cousin. Everyone was equal. We, we ate from the same bowl. We ate from the same food. We ate at the same table. We slept at the same, you know, the bed. Everything, there was no difference. But I do know for a fact that in some households, these other children are treated differently. Some are treated differently. Some are actually converted to become maids or domestic help. Um, and some of the families specifically go out to hire domestic helps in that age group of 8, 9, 10 or 11 or 12. And this is the same age group where this child or Chanya belongs. Now, when a child is in your care, either as a relative's child or as a maid or a domestic um, worker which you're paying or you have an, a business arrangement with or contract. Regardless, you have the care of another human being, albeit a child. As the woman in the family, as the mother of that home, as the wife in that family, the onus is on you to ensure that everyone's welfare is, you know, as it should be. Now, in this girl's case, what baffles me the most is this. She was, she was living with this family from the age of eight up until the age of 13 when she died. And how did she die? She was abused. She was raped. She was molested severally over and over and over again. By whom? By the husband of this woman. This child lived with this couple. 
and the husband who happened to be who happens to be um, an employee of a polytechnic, which is a high institution, raped her severally, raped her anally, raped her vaginally, and totally abused the girl beyond recognition. And you know what makes it worse? His son also collaborated. So father and son used this girl as their sexual object as and when it pleased them from the age of eight until the age of 14 or 13 when she then eventually passed away. And you're telling me that there was a wife in that home. You're telling me there was a mother, a woman in that home. I can't believe that. I, I struggle to understand why there'll be a woman in that house who was supposed to care for this child. And day in, day out, she never picked up on anything, no signs. Did you not even bother to give this girl a bath at the age of eight? Did you not even bother to supervise her bath times, her meal times, her dressing up? Did you not even bother as a woman in the, in the four years she lived in your home to even look at her personal care? You would have noticed something. You would have suspected something. How was she walking? Was she walking normally? I mean, you cannot defile a, an eight-year-old, a nine, a ten-year-old girl and expect her to walk or stand upright the same. It's not possible. So how can a woman, another woman, overlook this? Or did she actually know about this and decided not to say anything because of this passage in the Bible? Have a look at this passage, guys. As a Nigerian, I do know that we are very Christian. We're we are all family-oriented people in Nigeria. I know that we have a lot of Christians in Nigeria, as we do have Muslims as well. And I know that a lot there, there are more Christians around me personally, and a lot of them, you know, try to adhere to the tenements of Christianity. And if the tenements of Christianity says to you to, you know, honor your husbands, obey your husbands, be submissive to your husbands. My question to you women out there now, Nigerian women, African women, the whole women out there, at what point do you become an accomplice? All in the, in the sake of trying to adhere to the tenements of Christianity. At what point do you become, turn yourselves into becoming accomplices only because you want to try and protect your family? Or your husband, the man you love, the man you're spending the rest of your life with. When you know that he's doing something wrong, when you clearly can see the signs. You know, it takes me back into the case of Bill Cosby. Camille Cosby, his wife. For so many years, women came out and said, you know, he abused them on different level. At what point did Camille Cosby pick up? I mean, surely she could never have. I mean, if these stories are true. She must have seen signs. She must have noticed something. She must have felt, I mean, how good an actor can a man really be for years, over decades? And that's in, in Bill Cosby's case. And then we go further into Harvey Weinstein. I mean, I know his wife has divorced him now. He's separated from his wife because of all the scandals and all the messy situation on ground. But the fact still remains, how long did she know? Or are you telling me that she never had any inclination whatsoever? There was no signs. I mean, people would say you can't blame the wife. I mean, there's a school of thought that would say you can't honestly blame the wives. Some wives don't even know what their husbands are doing. Some wives, you know, don't even have a clue. And the husbands are a different, different person at home. When they're out there, there's somebody else. When they come home, there's somebody else. Yes, I get all this endless possibilities but the fact is you have a sixth sense your sixth sense will speak to you from where i'm standing there is no exoneration there is no excuse i refuse to accept that there's a reason why a woman a wife a human being who is in your care albeit as a maid as a domestic worker as a guardian to someone's child in whatever capacity that child is in your care I just don't want to believe that a child or another human being will be in your care for X amount of years and you would not even bother to keep an eye on that person's welfare. It doesn't matter the age. But in this, in this context, I'm, I'm particular about the age because this is a child. A child was left in your care as an auntie, as a wife, as a mother for over three years. 
and you never one day even bothered to take care or have a look at her at her personal care is it possible i mean words fail me words fail me honestly because i'm heartbroken how can i mean this girl died for nothing whatever she went through was preventable had that woman stepped in had she noticed something even if she couldn't confront her husband she could have sent the girl back to her parents that's the least she would have done and that girl will be alive today she won't be dead my message to women out there african women nigerian women all over the world because people make use of domestic um, workers people have domestic workers domestic aides people have you know servants who work for them different age groups um, some of these are wrong because you're having children who are under age working with you. But the excuse I hear is if they don't employ them as servants, then these children will probably end up being trafficked, which is a very valid um, excuse or explanation. However, the main message today is whether you have a child in your care as a domestic worker, whether you have a child in your care as a guardian, whether you have a child in your care as you being a philanthropic person or a person who's decided to be so charitable, to reach out to help, whatever your situation or your reason is, you have to look out for that child. You have to take care of the welfare of that person. Or Chanya will be with us today, alive, going to school as normal, like a normal child, had that woman, Mrs. Ogbaja, had she stepped in? Had she been a bit more maternal? Had she listened to her maternal instincts? She has a son. She has a son. Her son also abused, raped, and defiled Ochanya with his father. She has a child, so she must have maternal instincts. She must know what it is to be a mother because she nursed a child herself. I still cannot understand how Ochanya died for absolutely no reason. African women, Nigerian women, wives. Yes, marriage is a beautiful thing. But for a moment, if your husbands or your partners are going the wrong way, if they're doing something that is wrong, if every sense in your body tells you your partner is involved in something that's not right, would you for a moment say because you're trying to preserve your marriage? Would you for a minute say because your marriage comes first? Would you turn a blind eye? Would you turn yourself into an accomplice to murder? Would you become an accessory to murder? Would you become an accessory to fraud? Anything that would be against your conscience? Would you? My message today is to wives, mothers and women in Africa. Because this has happened in Nigeria today, but I know a lot of this is happening in other parts of Africa. I know for a fact that this is happening in so many parts of Africa and these children have no voices. These women who have been abused or children have been abused, especially girl, child, all over the world have been abused secretly. If they're not being abused, they've been trafficked. All sorts of atrocities are going in there. And you have madams, you have madams who are actually you know running cartels and selling on children you have madams wives at home who are turning blind eyes turning a blind eye to the atrocity of their partners their husbands if you're a wife and you're watching this video today think about your contribution think about the role you've been playing or you have to play or china is just one child one girl. There's so many girls out there in the world. Thank you. I'll see you in my next vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye.